Hello students, uh, today's episode is on the Builder Pattern and to illustrate this I am following uh, the guidelines outlined in the book Effective Java from Joshua Block. The benefit of this pattern is that it provides a better alternative to the Java Beans pattern because it doesn't preclude making the class immutable. And so as you may or may not know, uh, the Java Beans pattern has a very specific uh, requirement for the constructor, and this basically goes, goes against immutability. But the second benefit is that it allows the object to be built in steps rather than all at once. So you may, may have scenarios where it might be undesirable to provide a partially configured object, and so in my classes I've used the example of a factory line where regardless what what item you're building whether it's a consumer electronic item or a vehicle or an airplane this thing is built in stages and it's not until the very end when it rolls out of the factory that you have a fully instantiated or a fully realized thing and so the builder pattern in a way lets you do this. And so this is different than providing a conventional constructor and passing elements through the constructor and then adding values or changing the values to uh, setter methods. Because once you invoke the constructor, you get the object, whether you want it or not, whether you need it or not. The builder, uh, caches the information that is going to be part of the widget and it will not return an instance of that thing until you invoke the builder's build method. And so this is slightly different approach than using a conventional constructor or a factory pattern of some kind. So if you're coding for immutability like normally like I do it also provides threat safety because immutable objects, by the very nature of them, are threat safe. And additionally, this pattern is well suited for class hierarchies. And I'm not going to show that on this example, but I do plan to make uh, another video where I'm actually illustrating this fact. And so let's start by uh, making the constructor. Uh, for this class. So the constructor for the thing that you are going to be building is going to be private. You don't want to provide direct access to the constructor because the builder is the one that is going to be responsible for building the item that you want to build. So let's uh, create our private constructor. For now, I'm going to just leave it, leave it empty. I'm also going to uh, add some fields to the class, and although the names are not names that you will use in real example, uh, once you see the variable names that I'm going to use, there, the reason why I chose this name will be quite apparent. So. So here I'm basically uh, providing two fields, one that is required and one is optional, because I want to be able to illustrate the significance of this when you're actually building the builder class. So for now there's an error because these two fields are uh, final, which means that they have to be uh, initialize when the object is built and uh, we haven't done that yet. So let's uh, create our builder class and the builder has to be a static uh, inner uh, element of this widget. So
And so all of the fields that are part of the widget or the thing that you're building have to be also part of the builder. However, here's where the difference is. Require elements must be made final in the builder. So, so our require field is final. And our optional is not. And of course, because the required field is uh, final, I must initialize it through the constructor. So. Then for every optional field, I, I need to create a setter method. However, the setter method is a little bit different because this setter method is going to return the builder itself. So, and then return this. And I'm almost done with the builder. So before I add the actual build method, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to add my builder argument. And then I'm going to use that to Initialize the require field and as well as the optional. And I'm going to add my setter methods. I mean, my getter, sorry, my getter methods. and I'm basically done with this widget but as we mentioned before the constructor is private so I need to add one more piece to this um, builder class and that is the actual build method <coughs> and, uh, and here's basically what it does it just returns a new instance of immutable widget passing itself as the argument. And so this is basically all there is to to the uh, builder pattern uh, using an immutable uh, example where I set up my require fields, I inject it to the constructor, and then any optional values will be uh, set optionally through the setter method which returns uh, builder. Now let's create a let's create a main method here so we can see this uh, builder pattern in action. Mm. 
Okay, so let's create our builder. So um, So as you can see, when I invoke the constructor, uh, I return <coughs> return a builder that I can invoke later. I can do. This is why you return <coughs> return the builder so that you can chain methods calls together. So now that we're done with this example, let's um, let's override the uh, to string method. So. So that we can actually print the widget. So let's uh, override. And let's just return. Return required. And then simply here, all we have to do is uh, print out and that prints out this. Uh, if instead um, I Instead, I just build one that is and let's just call the build method here right away. And let's just uh, make this a widget. And let's copy this line over here. The optional is not it's not set, and that concludes uh, this episode in uh, the builder pattern. But I don't want to end the video uh, just like that. I do want to point out there are some um, things that you should be aware. Uh, so the cons of using this pattern is that. Uh, can be more verbose than telescopic uh, constructors. 
So if you have a class that has a lot of uh, fields uh, and you telescope the constructors, which means you pre provide a base constructor and then you can initialize or inject a dependency to other constructors, you call the constructor from inside another constructor. That's basically a telescoping pattern when you call another method from another from one method. So in this case, you call a constructor from another constructor so that you can uh, make use of that constructor that has already been made to set the other values. And so this option can be more verbose because you have more calls to make, uh, whether than just calling one constructor, you know, like if you have, let's say, for example, uh, three constructors, one that take one argument, a second one that takes two arguments, and a third one that takes three arguments, you can make a single constructor call. And then in that class that you're building, there's a telescoping pattern that invokes the constructor with the two elements that calls the <coughs> constructor with one element, and you end up initializing all of the fields with one call. That's not always the case with this pattern. You need to make these uh, these optional setter calls separately. Uh, so that makes your code more verbose. There can also be a slight performance issue when you deal with applications that are performance critical. I personally has never experienced this, but this is something that you should be aware of. So if you have a situation where your application is performance critical, you may not want to use this pattern. Uh, also, another, uh, another and this is not necessarily related to this pattern, more to immutability is that when you create something immutable, it means that the value cannot change, so if you need to create another, uh, if you need to set a different value, then you can, so you have to create a new object. So that basically means that you're gonna be creating a lot more instances of the same type of object over the life of your application. So some people prefer not to go for immutability for this reason. Uh, I weight this against threat safety, so i rather just go with uh, things being inherently trust safe and I deal with the management of over creating instances in the application uh, but it's also another thing that you have to be aware of with this particular example which follows immutability so with that I want to close this uh, episode thank you for stopping by and I'll see you again next time and don't forget to subscribe